Hello, everyone. Uh, my PhD thesis is about approaches to reconstruction of oral maxillofacial defects based on uh, virtual surgical planning. My name is Madalena Banarescu, and I'm a PhD student, and uh, I'm also a student at the University of Medicine and Pharmacy from uh, Romania, Grigore de Popa. Uh, my vision is to improve the life quality of patients with oral maxillofacial defects and to improve the aesthetics and, fun and functional outcomes in these reconstruction uh, techniques. Uh, I have two ongoing projects so far. The first one, uh, we investigated the effectiveness of intraoperative surgical navigation over conventional surgery in the management of zygomatic maxillary complex fractures. It's a systematic review and uh, a meta-analysis. There are 7.5 million new cases of facial, facial fractures uh, globally just in, in the year of 2017. And as you can see, the prevalence of uh, zygomatic fractures in maxillofacial trauma is pretty high. And more concerning is that 10 to 15% of patients have a remaining mid-facial deformity after conventional surgical treatment. So our aim was to assess the accuracy in treating zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures using an intraoperative uh, navigation system. The question was, is, uh, was that uh, if this intraoperative surgical navigation is more effective in treating zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures, so we compared uh, the surgery assisted by intraoperative surgical navigation uh, with the uh, classical technique, the conventional one, and uh, the primary outcome was the accuracy. We measured the accuracy at uh, different uh, landmarks. And then the secondary outcomes were the operative time, mouth opening, amount bleeding, hospital stay, and uh, cheek numbness. And our hypothesis was that uh, intraoperative surgical navigation is more effective than conventional surgery in treating this kind of fractures. Here you can see uh, the search key that we used and the number of uh, results. And after a full text analysis, we had five uh, eligible articles. Uh, in the first figures, in the first figure, you can see that we investigated the accuracy at the level of the most prominent point uh, of the bone. It's really important because uh, this one uh, gives uh, uh, the face an uh, aesthetic uh, appearance and as surgeons, we also have to take care of that. We measured uh, mean differences uh, in millimeters and uh, as you can see, there was no statistically significant difference between the navigation group and the uh, conventional group. In the second figure, we measured also the accuracy, but this time uh, at the level of infraorbital rim. We measure also the uh, accuracy at this point because the, the zygomatic fractures are pretty often associated with orbital fractures and uh, the patients often need uh, also orbital reconstruction. Uh, we also measured mean differences in millimeters and uh, we had also uh, not have any significant difference between uh, the two groups. Um, in the third figure, we measured uh, the average deviation of the zygomatic bone after the surgery. Um, the average deviation was measured compared to the virtual surgical planning made before the surgery, so the ideal result that we would like to have, and we compared it by superimposing this image with the actual result that we had uh, after the surgery. And this time, as you can see, uh, we had a significant e improvement in the navigation group compared to the conventional one. We also measured millimeters, uh, uh, mean differences in, uh, in millimeters. Uh, on the second figure, we investigated the operative time in navigation guided and conventional surgery. And uh, to our surprise, we didn't expect, but th the actual surgery took more in the navigation group uh, than the conventional one. It was not uh, a big difference, but uh, still, the, usually the surgery should last uh, less in the navigation guided than the conventional surgery, uh, or at least we expected so. Uh, we also investigated the maximum mouth opening because after this kind of uh, zygomatic fractures, there is uh, a risk that uh, the mouth opening would be limited for the patient. And we tried to also investigate that, but we didn't, ha uh, we didn't uh, notice any difference between uh, the navigation guided and the conventional surgery. 
This is the most comprehensive meta-analysis on the intraoperative surgical navigation in treating zygomatic fractures. We investigated mul multiple outcomes and multiple accuracy analysis. Um, but we also have a small number of studies included. We couldn't investigate the soft tissue, which is also important for the aesthetics uh, of the patient, and it included multiple types uh, of fractures. As a conclusion, we can say that intraoperative surgical navigation improves postoperative average deviation, but there were no significant difference uh, for the accuracy for the most prominent and infraorbital point in the operative time and maximum mouth opening. So this is why we can use intraoperative surgical navigation in the more, more severe types of fractures. It can also be useful for the young surgeons or the more uh, unexperienced ones. And uh, it is also important to notice the learning curve, uh, the learning curve that it's uh, really important when using uh, a new system. Uh, for implication for research, uh, we need to investigate different types of fracture. We need to measure the time using the intraoperative surgical navigation during surgery, which is also really important. We need to measure the orbital volume, and we need some pre preoperative measurements for the maximum mouth opening. And last but not least, it's really important to, me to uh, measure uh, the soft tissue and how we deal with the soft tissue uh, in this kind of surgery to have a more comprehensive view of how this impacts the uh, aesthetics. Um, the manuscript right now is at the uh, language editing and we plan to submit it uh, um, in a short time to the cranial maxillofacial surgery journal. The second project, uh, we investigated the effectiveness of intraoperative surgical navigation over conventional surgery, but this time in the management of orbital reconstruction. It's still a systematic review and uh, meta-analysis. We can see that the prevalence of orbital wall, fr wall fractures I are, is pretty high in cranium, in cranium maxillofacial trauma, and it is a really challenging test because of the functional and aesthetic complication. Moreover, when we have complications after this kind of surgery, it's really costly, uh, uh, the secondary reconstruction, and it's uh, more challenging for the surgeon and also for the patient. So this is why we want to investigate the clinical outcomes of orbital reconstruction assisted by intraoperative surgical navigation. And the question is if intraoperative surgical navigation can achieve better clinical outcomes than the conventional technique in orbital reconstruction, we used also the PICO format and we investigated the, pa the patients undergoing orbital reconstruction, comparing the, uh, the intraoperative surgical navigation with a conventional technique. The primary outcome this time, uh, we want to measure the orbital volume, the restored or orbital volume, and the secondary outcomes are implant accuracy, operative time, and complications such as diplopia in ophthalmos and the rate of re revision surgery. And our hypothesis is that intraoperative surgical navigation achieve, can achieve better clinical outcomes than, convention, than the conventional technique for orbital reconstruction. Uh, here you can see the preliminary surge. This, is, this project is still in uh, early phases. Uh, but as soon as we submit the first one, we will start working on the second one. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your nice presentation. How do you measure the accuracy in your first topic? So uh, in, in the first project, we measured the accuracy uh, using Two, meth two methods, basically. So the first one was a two-dimensional one, and the second one was um, a three-dimensional one. The three-dimensional one, as I said, uh, we used in this kind of surgeries with the intraoperative surgical navigation. We use a, a computer program. Um, it's called Virtual Surgical Planning. There are different commercial, uh, commercial num uh, names for it, but we basically uh, do the surgery um, on the computer and we have the ideal result. We, we are using a mirroring technique, it's called. So basically we mirror the healthy side 
and then we have the ideal result that we uh, want to achieve uh, during the surgery. And we can compare this plan with the uh, post-operative CT of the patient to see if we actually follow the plan or not. And we can measure the millimeters, the difference basically between the actual result and the virtual surgical planning. Okay. Thank you very much. A question is that do you use this surgical planning in your practice? in Romania or in Hungary, anywhere, or it's just experimental? And is there different types of softwares to make this uh, map or? Yes, so uh, thank you for the question. So there are many different softwares that they can be used based on the same idea. Uh, and yes, we are currently uh, using in Romania, and I'm not sure about Hungary, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm, it, it's used pretty widely, this software. Uh, not the intraoperative surgical navigation one, but the virtual surgical planning has a, a few years now, uh, and it's been really widely used. And uh, at our hospital, we use it uh, pretty often, I think, in almost... Um, every case, especially when uh, we talk about more complex reconstruction, so we don't use it, for example, for a simple fracture, but for the more complex one, we we use it every time. Even if we don't use it, for example, for the intraoperative navigation system, but we create three-dimensional models that we can use to adapt the materials that we will use later in during the operation. Thank you, Madam. You had good progress. Um, in your uh, first study, I mean, there are, I mean, I also saw the, the manuscript, so there are more, maybe more questions than answers because of the small number. Of, so I just wonder, especially because you are an inter international student and then you came from here, here, Romania, and then now you will work remotely. So do you have a chance to, to actually to try to set up a clinical trial on this? at all? I mean, you and your... That, that is a very good question. Thank you. Uh, oh. Tell them that this was asked, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So setting a clinical trial for any kind of uh, s surgery type or field, it's uh, pretty hard because you need a pretty large number of patients and you have to very carefully select them because, for example, in our meta-analysis, we had different different types of fractures included. <laughs> and when, when and if we are to think of a clinical trial, uh, we have to be very careful about the type of fractures that we include. And we cannot always control for that. And even if we can control for that, we need a pretty long time for us to select uh, the patients, because maybe we have patients that have zygomatic fractures, but apart from that, they can have multiple facial fractures and they need even a more uh, complex treatment or complex surgery. So it is possible, but we need a lot of time or a lot of unlucky people to suffer from this kind of fractures in a very short time. <laughs>